I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Stick around to the end of the episode to receive a special offer from Squarespace. This time around, we're going to be making a weapon from Fate Apocrypha. Now, I know you all requested Archer's Twin Blades. I'm not making that. We have a whole bunch of new characters. One of them is the ruler. Not only does she have a lance and whole weapons are one of our favorites. She's also the reincarnation of Joan of Arc, one of the most fascinating historical characters of all time. As a fan of both the Fate series and historical European martial art, every knight to their sword needs a lance. I already have Excalibur. Now I'm going to have a lance. Let's get to it. I just now formed the head of the spear. What I did is I took a piece of 1045, squared it out, and gave an extreme taper. After the taper was set, I took my fullering tool and isolated a portion which will later on become the tag. I isolated it so it will not be affected by the next procedure. In order to create a cruciform cross section, which is this, I took my fullering tool once again, but stuck my taper in this way and started fullering along the flats. First like that, and then turning it at 90 degrees. As the two fullers interact this way and this way, the fullers become deeper and the flanges became wider. Once I was satisfied with the fullers, I took my spear and went to the flat dies of the power hammer, pinching out each of the flanges, making it flatter and wider. Those are going to be the blades of the spear. After the flanges were set, I pulled out the tank, which later on will be welded onto the socket. In order to do the socket, I'm going to take a piece of scrap 1045 I've left over from another previous build. And I'm going to flatten it out into a more regular shape and then once again take my fullering tool and start spreading it so that my socket is going to be a triangle. And after it's sufficiently flat and thin, I'm going to take it to the hand anvil and use one of my hardy tools to give it a bend. After the bend is established, I'm going to stick in a mandrel. The mandrel will allow me to have an internal conical shape. And once the shape will be set up, I will have to forge weld the head of the spear and the socket together. I decided to make this entire section of the spear from one piece, both the spike itself and the flange that mounts it onto the handle. The next stage is to attach the spear point to the socket, like so. Now for this, I'm going to use the coal forge. And there's a very big reason why gas forge is less reliable than a coal forge or a charcoal forge. The chemical formula for propane is C3H8. So we have three atoms of carbon and 
eight atoms of hydrogen per molecule of propane. The process of burning is the process of a chemical reaction of your burning substance with oxygen, O2. The carbon here reacts with oxygen and produces CO2. It also produces heat. It is an exothermic reaction. However, the hydrogen has to go somewhere too. It also reacts with oxygen and produces H2O, which is water. There's gas, high heat water flowing around your forge. Water makes iron and steel rust. So no matter what you do, you develop scale inside your propane forge. And that prevents a good forge weld. In a coal forge or a charcoal forge, we just have pure carbon, C6, and air, a burning reaction, which is primarily oxygen, O2. The end result is CO2 and heat. So all of the oxygen goes into production of CO2, and no extra oxygen, if you're very good at pumping your bellows, reacts with your steel. And because you're producing a lot of heat, you will actually have excess carbon gas. Inside the forge, your steel does not oxidize, meaning it's always clean and the weld is better. However, the excess carbon reacts with rust, which is iron and oxygen, and pulls out the extra oxygen, turning rust back into iron. As a result, your forge welds are much cleaner and considering that coal and charcoal give a higher temperature than propane as well, they're more reliable. So most of you know that Ilya is a big fan of the Fate series, but what you probably don't know is I am too. When we made the Excalibur sword a few years ago, Ilya talked me into watching Fate Zero, and then I liked that so much that I moved on to Fate Stay Night. Doing some research for this, I was really happy to get a sneak peek of that. It looks pretty awesome. Now, what Ilya has done is pretty amazing. We make four flange maces all the time, but we always MIG weld on each flange individually. He made this from one piece. I gotta say, that was really cool to see. He left me a lot of material to play with, though. So each of these flanges are much bigger than they need to be. So my goal is to now go in and hog a lot of material off, really sculpt all these flanges, give them the proper shape, trim them way down, polish this thing up, and then we're gonna fabricate the other pieces that go on down here on the socket a little later. With the basic profile of the sphere blade now established, I'm gonna start blending out the socket. I'm just gonna use the slack belt on our normal 80 grit sander and get the job done. Afterwards, Bill's gonna take it. He's gonna use a more narrow and softer contact wheel to get in between each flange and clean those areas up. The head for the spear will have to be hardened. Ilya's going to bring it up to temperature. He'll be quenching this into brine, which is a saturated solution of salt and water. You've seen Ilya now forge the base part of our spear. He made an incredible set of flanges, but there's another set of flanges that go beyond that that will be TIG welded or MIG welded onto the actual shaft of the spear. So after looking at the draw line, I decided I needed about a five inch by two and a half inch box to start from. I'm just gonna use an arc tool. Basically have two main striking points on those flanges that then come down to an end like that. Trim away this section. So 
So at this point, I can basically hand this off to John and then we'll cut four of these out, get them ground, fabricated, welded on, go from there. Okay, Ilya went ahead and forged the main spearhead for our weapon here. Matt cleaned it up, got a good clean profile. Our next step is to add four additional flanges down the bottom here. So we're going to go ahead and plasma cut them out of some heavy plate. Matt will clean them up and we'll weld them on. Now that these pieces have been cut out, Matt's going to take them to the sander and deburr them. He'll need to do this so that they can sit flat against the material as John welds them on. Making sure that these flanges all match the spear tip, John welds these sections on. Anybody who's familiar with the Fate series and the Joan of Arc character knows that we can't just make her spear. We also have to make her huge flag standard. So I've asked my fiance Natasha to go ahead and make that for us. So to protect your hand on the handle of this lance, we're actually making a couple of ferrules. What these are gonna do is give you the ability to force the weapon stronger and keep your hand from sliding down the pole and striking into the bladed section itself. I've already made this one on the lathe. I'm using a steel that allows me to bore it very quickly. You'll see the chips break clean. It's called free machining steel. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the second one now. Matt now goes to the small baiter and blends in these flanges. He's gonna use a wheel that's slightly soft that's gonna allow him to push these welds away and make them appear as if they never were. Sometimes on an individual process, they'll just be one person. In this case, to get this piece finished, we're gonna have the entire shop going all at once. In this build, the craftsmen in the shop actually learned a few new tricks. We now know that we can forge a four-flanged object out of one solid piece. This is by far the longest weapon we've ever made, and with the addition of making the flag, it might be one of the most elegant as well.
We are excited to have partnered with Squarespace to bring you an all new website with all the things you need to know about Baltimore Knife and Sword and Man in Arms Reforged. We recently started creating our new website and Squarespace, they couldn't have made it any easier. They have a great selection of pre-made designer templates and an easy to use all-in-one platform that requires no installing, no patching or updating. Check it out by going to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash man-at-arms to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or a domain.